Hey there, welcome back to True North Reviews. My name is Ryan, and today we are reviewing the new Post Malone record, Hollywood's Bleeding. This is the third studio album from Austin Richard Post. The album title, as melodramatic as it is, Hollywood's Bleeding, is a reference to Post Malone moving out of LA and into Utah. He just couldn't take living with all the fake people and the blood sucking vampires out in Hollywood. The people that tend to get caught up with luxury, opulence, and the lifestyle. It's not hard to understand why someone who was originally raised in Texas would want to be there anyways. Besides his place of origin, Post Malone is a fantastic artist. He is an incredible musician. He's one of these rappers who has really come into his own. He's kind of in his own lane of style. He creatively blends pop hooks with trap southern rock instrumentation. He has a versatile voice, and he, the dude is dedicated to his craft. I could tell with this previous album, Beer Bongs and Bentleys, this dude was right down to business. He not only crushed it with the singles on that album, but he came through with one of my favorite records of 2018, owing to the fact that he stepped up his game across the board with vocal performances, melodic construction, composition, and hard rock production. Not only this, but Post Malone put together an influential album that I could see many artists in the future trying to recreate. Now Post Malone, he doesn't want to rip off his own style that he's got going for him, so with the teaser tracks on Hollywood's Bleeding, instead he offered some different sounds, some more gimmicky than others, some more serious in their tone. Regardless, I enjoyed all of them leading up to this record's release. Those included Sunflower featuring Sway Lee's gorgeous vocals, Goodbyes featuring Young Thug, a bit more of a, an eccentric performance from him, and Wow, which dropped on Christmas Eve 2018. We also had the track Circles, which came out a week prior to the album's release, and that's what brings us to the record itself. What is going on with it? What's the big deal? Is it worth your time? Is it worth mine? Well, on first listen, being completely honest, I was let down with what I was hearing, no doubt because I had such high expectations after loving Beer Bongs and Bentleys, but it was still alarming to find that none of the songs past the singles were sticking out in my mind in any way. Which is always something I am fearing with records, especially from hip-hop artists, as they tend to put their best foot forward and then they sometimes follow through with a lackluster album full of filler. It wasn't until I stepped away from Hollywood's Bleeding and gave it a couple days to sit without feeling the need to listen to it. It was when I came back to it after those couple days, that's when uh, the songs started to be a lot more enjoyable. The melodies were starting to stick out in my head and I just wasn't trying to rush the review process and get bogged down by the fact that this is a hyped album. And does this album deserve the hype? I think it's a good record. It's not as great as Beer Bongs and Bentleys, I will put that out there right now, uh, but it's solid. There are plenty of memorable moments on this album, lyrically, melodically, just all around. We have a fantastic cut on here entitled Allergic, which features a pop hook at its finest, one of the best that Post has put to paper. He has done it in the past, and he again flawlessly has written a song with an unusual chord progression and has made it stick like glue. He finds a great melody, he switches up what you expect to hear with this descending musical idea, and layers that with some pretty awesome vocal harmonies just to add a bit more of a dynamic element to the track. Post even offers some dynamic vocal range, he tries out some falsettos on this song and record, but this song, Allergic, is the best example of his versatile singing ability. The falsettos from the other artist on this project, however, they're a different story. Future's feature on the track, Die For Me, although he does sound clear and audible unlike most of his solo material, he sounds awful. He couldn't sing falsetto if his life depended on it. Plus, something about the mixing of his voice on this song, it's way quieter than his counterpart, Halsey, who doesn't sing in falsetto at all, but for some reason, ever since her debut album, I can't seem to enjoy much of her music, as the verse that she contributes to this post record is no exception. I'm not the biggest fan of it, even if she is portraying this female who post is obsessed and bewitched by. The other features on this album, I can see the appeal. It does seem a little odd to have Ozzy Osbourne, of all people, follow up Meek Mill and Lil Baby on a track, but flow-wise and stylistically speaking, these songs still play into the Post Malone playbook of brooding, savage compositions with chugging guitars to push a dark, melancholic, or introspective message. And I have to admit, take what you want as a song, it's pretty ambitious too. We bring together artists that most people wouldn't 
didn't even try to bring together on the same track. Now I could totally see some people disagreeing with that point. The Ozzy Osbourne feature with Travis Scott, it might be a little far-fetched and playing into the overboard themes of Hollywood's bleeding, oh I'm being dramatic, <sighs> but I can suspend my disbelief for it and just sit back and enjoy this record for the most part and that makes my life a whole lot easier when I go to review an album. Another feature on this project I've yet to talk about comes on the song Enemies. It features the Baby. This is a good tune for its sung chorus and production, but the rapping, the deliveries from Post on this track are clunky and jarring, laughing to the bank like ha ha ha. <laughs> the Baby definitely outshines on this track here as he raps about fast food and his success as a young artist and how we should fear his come up. Opening up the world of Hollywood's Bleeding, we have the title track, which is a short intro. Many of the cuts on this record end up being around two and a half minutes, which is fine. There are 17 tracks on here that add up to be just under an hour. The brevity is a strength for this record, and a lot of the songs is replay factor. More about the intro cut, though, there is a wonderful blending of guitar and a trap beat, as Post effortlessly does this with the help of songwriter and producer Louis Bell, who he's worked with in the past on Beer Bongs and Bentleys, and he's here to recruit him again as he comes through with some amazing songs such as Saint Tropez. A song about being happy for what Post has achieved and not really being caught up with the whole sad introspective rap that he does on a number of his songs. This song Saint Tropez along with Wow are the most carefree with the lyrical sentiment and are both really fun to listen to because of that. Goodbyes and Sunflower I will reiterate I like them and it's because of their stunning production and atmosphere. Goodbyes will be one of my favorite songs of this year without a doubt. Now Hollywood's Bleeding, it's not a perfect album by any stretch of the imagination. Like I said, it's good, not as great as Beer Bongs and Bentleys. And it's really the final half of this album where we start to see things go awry with songs like Internet, Myself, and I Know, some of the most forgettable songs I've heard from the Post Malone discography. And as much as I'd like to admit, having string instrumentation for Post Malone to experiment with on the track Internet, uh, the lyrical focus, it is something that should be up my alley because I tend to avoid the internet, even if I do post on YouTube a lot. But there's still something about this song, and it's it's saying something if I, I can't get on board with it. I don't know. No thanks. I'll pass. There's also a redundancy on this album to have essentially the same vocal feature multiple times. I think of a track like Staring at the Sun with SZA coming right before Sunflower featuring Sway Lee. Both artists are serving the same purpose over top of similarly structured and nearly identical sounding songs. Beyond that though, I don't have many complaints. This is a good record I would recommend. Uh, it's a decent starting place if you want to get to know Post Malone and a bit more about his melancholic side. Uh, I would still say that Beer Bongs and Bentleys is, is the friendlier summary album and it's essential to be heard. Hollywood's Bleeding though, it ended up being better than what I uh, could have expected after the first listen and I'm happy to say that. We have strong hooks, solid production, hit or miss features, but eh gonna leave it at that. I'm feeling 7 out of 10. There's the review of the new Post Malone record. Sound off down below in the comments. Let me know what you think of it. Leave a like. Subscribe if you're new in town. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a rockin' day.